It's time to have some faith. Fall is in the air, and it's Cocktail Friday. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello and welcome to a Cocktail Friday. It is September 18th, 2020. The quote for today comes from the all-day virtual workshop I took part in yesterday. And this is something that came from Trent Shelton. If you have never been exposed to Trent Shelton, if you ever get a chance to see him speak live, I highly recommend it. Very, very inspirational. And he gives you some real, real tools and tactics to improve and better your life. Now, he said yesterday, which really just hit home with me, we would rather live a life in a comfort zone that leads to an uncomfortable life than get out of our comfort zone that leads to an uncomfortable life. Excuse me, I did that all wrong. I'm sorry, it's still early. I'm going to say it one more time. We would rather live in a comfort zone that leads to an uncomfortable life than get out of our comfort zone that leads to a comfortable life. What that means is we're all afraid to do the hard stuff. We're all afraid to push ourselves. And it's just not worth it. You know, life is going to be hard regardless. It's either going to be hard in the moment when you push through to get what you truly want, or it's going to be easy now, but you'll never live the life that you truly want. That would be very sad. So yes, I have to continuously push myself. I have had a horrible summer when it comes to work. I have not done much at all. I'm ashamed. I'm a little embarrassed. I enjoyed my summer, though. So I'm not going to beat up myself too much. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to relax and just be like I did this summer. You just never know, right? So I'm not too terribly upset with myself. I could have been doing more on the work end of things, for sure. But that is what I was paying attention to and focusing on during my all-day virtual workshop yesterday. And, you know, these things are great because they really pump you up and make you want to take massive action uh, towards your goals. I got to hear speakers such as Trent Shelton, as I mentioned, Jenna Kutcher, uh, Brenda Bouchard. You heard me talk about him before, Dean Grazioso, Tony Robbins. Um... Pete Vargas, who I had never seen speak before, and uh, Nick Soltos, Santos, I believe his name was, and um, also Jamie, oh, I can't remember her last name, but she created It Cosmetics in her living room, ended up selling it to L'Oreal for $1.3 billion. Could you imagine? How do you start a makeup line? That seems so crazy to me. And she talked about how for three years she couldn't get a yes. For three years she pitched her cosmetics to all kinds of retailers and QVC. And they all said no. And finally after three years QVC said, all right, we're going to give you ten minutes. Ten minutes. That's it. And the problem with going on QVC is you have to have a stock of products to sell. So you have to get the products ready before you know if they're even going to sell. So it's a huge investment. 
When it works, it works great. But if it doesn't work, you could be declaring bankruptcy, which is what she would have had to do if she didn't sell it. But luckily for her, all of her products sold out in 10 minutes. And then, of course, she was invited to come back. She ended up being the biggest cosmetic brand in all of QVC history. Then all of a sudden, everybody wanted her product. She was in Sephora. She was in Ulta. She was everywhere. And finally, ultimately sold her company for $1.3 billion. I don't think she will ever have to worry about money again. So you're going to be seeing more from me. I'm going to be pumping it up. I'm going to be putting some videos out there again. I'm going to be more present on social media. Speaking of social media, it's like squirrel. Speaking of social media, have you guys seen The Social Dilemma? It is a documentary on Netflix. I've been seeing people rumbling about it. I watched it yesterday. Boy, do I feel controlled. I feel like I've been bamboozled. Now, the most interesting thing to come from this, and it is part of the reason why we are so divided now as a country, and I don't believe this was intentional on any of the social networks part. You know, the goal of any social network is to keep you on it. I remember I was doing a course with Jenna Kutcher one day and she asked, what is the goal of Instagram? What is it that they want from you more than anything? And most of us said, you know, well, they want they want us to buy from their advertiser. She said, no, that's not it. They want to keep you on the app as long as possible. So, and you'll, you'll notice this. What they do is the people that you look at the most, like say if you're on Instagram and you look at your stories, always the first couple of stories are the people that I repeatedly watch their stories. Rachel Hollis, my niece, um, Jenna Kutcher, um, the people that I consistently go back to are populated first in my news media. It is the same with Facebook. And I noticed this when I started getting into the personal development uh, field much more because that's what the ads are. Now I get suggestions for pages that have to do with personal development and business coaches and stuff like that. So what they're doing is they're curtailing to your desires. They're curtailing to what they believe you want to see in order to keep you on longer. The problem that is coming out of this is that you're only seeing things that you agree with. You're only seeing one side of things. For example, in this highly controversial political climate, I am way more likely to see an article that backs up the beliefs that Facebook already thinks I have when it comes to political candidates than to see an article that praises the candidate I'm not in favor of. Do you see what I'm saying? And I'm trying to say this in a way so that, you know, I'm being neutral. But what it is showing you, because they even said straight out in the documentary, when it comes to the political climate, People are like, how can they not see, talking about the opposite view, how can they not see what's really going on? They really don't see what's going on because it's not being shown to them. So, open your mind, follow a couple people from the opposite point of view of yours, just so that you can see Both sides of the story. Always keep an open mind. Nobody is 100% bad and 100% good. No. Everybody has a little bit of good in them and a little bit of bad in them. Some people have a little bit of good and a lot of bad and vice versa. But now that we know this, it is up to us to control it. Because I got to tell you, I feel completely manipulated and totally controlled after watching this documentary yesterday. They even went so far as to do a little bit of, you know, mock-ups. You know, the the one kid said he was going to 
get off his phone for a week. Wanted to see if he could do it. The people, the algorithm, algorithms, which they had, you know, dressed up as people, were sending him all kinds of notifications and all of this kind of stuff to try and get him back on his phone. That is the one thing I am good because I'm a little addicted to social media. There's no doubt about it. Um, ever since I've started the business, I've kind of laid off my personal page uh, way more than in the past. I go through little spurts where, you know, I might post a lot. Like when I was on vacation, I posted a lot. But now you might not hear from me for a while. I am getting a little bit into the politics just because I feel the need to get my voice and my opinion out there. And with that, I will say that somebody in my core group of friends here in the neighborhood just blocked me. <laughs> I was really upset about it at first. I'm like, I can't believe she blocked me. Um, because she decided to chime in on one of my posts. And I was very respectful. I'm very respectful. I do not name call. I do not call people stupid. I don't say, how can you not see? I just point out my point of view. That is all I want. I want to get my point of view across. I don't want to fight with people. I don't want to alienate people. I don't want to make enemies. You know, we're all entitled to our opinion. And just because I don't believe the same thing that you believe doesn't mean that we can't be friends. So at first when I realized, and I realized right away that she blocked me because it's so easy to figure these things out now. You know, we have one of these local groups that I'm in. <coughs> Excuse me. And in one of the posts, the original poster, the OP, tagged a bunch of people in it. And when her name came up, it didn't, it wasn't highlighted as if she were one of my friends. So right away, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, huh, I wonder why that is. And then I go to search for her. She's not coming up in a search. So not only did she defriend me, she blocked me. <laughs> and I, like I said, I, I, I thought about reaching out. And then I was like, you know what? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm allowed to state my opinion. And I went back to respond to one comment that she had made. Again, very respectful. And then she went on to argue with other people in the post I don't know if that's why she got upset. I don't know. Because the next day I even posted something that said something to the effect of, it doesn't matter who you vote for, I'm still going to be your friend. She even agreed with that post. And the next thing I know, I'm blocked. But anyway, I'm just not, I just can't worry about it. I just, I'm allowed to have my opinion. I'm allowed to put it on my own Facebook page. Because here is what I do most of the time. If I see people posting about views that I do not agree with, and they are a friend of mine, I will scroll by. I don't want to get into it with a friend of mine. <coughs> Especially someone I don't know really well, somebody that I'm not super close to, that I don't know how they're going to take uh, an opposite position. So I just kind of feel like if you're going to take that position that you're going to come up against something that I'm putting on my page, then you can't get mad at me. That was your choice. You decided to go into my fray. And again, was not disrespectful. No name calling. I just pointed out some facts that I had at the time. So I can't worry about stuff like that. But... Now that I've seen this documentary, I do realize that I am completely biased to one side because that is the majority of material that I am seeing. So make sure that you inform yourself. Make sure that you educate yourself and know both sides of the story, one, before voting, and even more so before spouting off. Okay? That's all I'm trying to say. We've all been duped. We've all been manipulated. We are all puppets. They design these things to be addictive. And that's what I had started to say is I, I don't think that the social media platforms 
are trying to be divisive. I think they're just trying. Again, their main goal is to keep you on the app as long as possible. So they're going to give you more stuff that you enjoy rather than stuff you may not even pay attention to. It makes sense on that level. But it's also part, not the complete, but part of the reason that we are so divided in this country right now. So take that and, uh, you know, use a little, use a little more open-mindedness. This is one of the reasons why I do not ever take push notifications. I just don't need to be constantly notified. I am on my phone enough. I will see your message, your response, your what have you in all due time. We were in Colorado last week and my bro- we had a big group message going between all the people, my family that were going to Colorado. And I was picking my brother up from the airport. And I kept waiting for a text message from him to let me know that he had arrived. I knew what time his plane was supposed to come in. I kept waiting for a text message. Uh, I was using the GPS on my phone, so I wasn't really on Facebook or social media as much as I, you know, am at times. So we get to the airport, and we end up parking, which we really try not to do because they really just overcharge at these parking lots. But we ended up parking, and as I am baffled that I still haven't heard from him, I check the Facebook message, and he says, okay, I landed, and it was 20 minutes ago. And I'm like, why, why wouldn't he have texted me, the person who was picking him up? Well, he just assumed that I got notifications from Facebook Messenger. I do not. I do not get any notifications on my phone. I have nothing that will light up my phone Unless the phone does it itself. Like, occasionally I get news. And Apple will just send me news and it'll light up my phone. I didn't ask for that. I may even be able to disable it. It's not that annoying that I worry about it. The only thing I get that lights up my phone is alerts for new podcasts. And that's because I've subscribed to a couple of podcasts. And that's not something I'm going to drop everything for and go run and look at anyway. Anyway, okay, I'm going to get off this topic now because I've really just gone on and on and on. And I didn't mean to spend 15 minutes talking about this. But alas, that's what I have done. But really, if you get a chance over the weekend, Netflix, The Social Dilemma, really eye-opening. It's a little bit scary. Uh, do not be manipulated. Turn off those push notifications. Just say no. There's a man that's on the news this morning. I'm not sure if it's a Philadelphia area man or not, but he has already come up with a way for kids to trick or treat while social social distancing. He put together a chute that goes on top of his railing that leads down stairs outside of his house so he can put the candy in the top of the chute. It just flies straight down, and the kids can catch it. Not only is it great for social distancing, but it's super fun too, right? The kids can catch their candy. And no more of this sticking your your grubby little hand inside the bucket and taking out 16 pieces at a time. Yeah, that was a problem last year. really hasn't been that much of a problem. I typically like... To, to hand them the bowl, give them the option to choose what they want. But last, I mean, I literally had one kid, like, go in, like, three times just grabbing handfuls of candy. I'm like, all right, that is enough. Don't be so greedy. So um, if you don't have steps, I assume this is something that you can't do. I'm probably going to opt out of Halloween this year. They're probably not even going to do it. I live in a resort area. There is not a lot of full-timers. So the last couple of years, they've made up a map of people in the neighborhood who are handing out candy. And 
the parents have been driving their kids around to the, to the houses that have signed up. They're probably not even going to do that this year. We, we get very little kids as it is. I probably won't even bother this year. So the topic for today, I wanted to get a picture of Tucker out there because I was talking to you yesterday about how uh, she'd gotten her hair did. And so I put up a picture of Tucker with her new hairdo. But then I wanted to to hear from you about, do you let your pet sleep in bed with you? It is amazing how this tiny little dog that we have that weighs 14 pounds manages to take up the whole king size bed. How do you, how does she do that? You ask, I have no idea. She likes to try and touch both of us at the same time. She'll put her, her front paws on her daddy and then spread across and put her back legs on her mama. Or what typically happens is she'll pick one of us. Now, her daddy often tries to get her to go down by, her, by his feet. She's got me wrapped around her little finger because she's 14 and I'm afraid she's going to die. So I let her do whatever she wants. So once her daddy tries to get her to go down to sleep by his leg, she just comes over to me because she knows I'm not going to make her do that. So what she does is she ends up trying to be right up against my body the whole time. And I think that instinctively as the night goes on, I move over a little bit to try and get away from her. I think it's instinctual. Like I said, I'm, I'm, and then I literally wake up in the middle of the night and I have like a sliver of the bed. And God forbid, I have to get up and go to the bathroom because then when I come back, if I try to move her, oh, she is not happy. Like I'll come back and there'll be like enough room for a thigh. I'll be like, Tucker, can you move? Like I literally have to physically push her over. And then sometimes she tries to bite us. She does. She is an ornery crotchety old lady. So I wanted to hear from you. Do you let your pets sleep in your bed? I don't know. I might second guess this the next time around. Uh, Renee says that her Kelly snuggles with her every night. When she's ready for bed, she taps my leg a few times. Jim says absolutely what are dogs for if not for cuddling. Karen says nope. The cat is confiscated by, confiscated by my daughter at precisely the time I confiscate her electronics. Adele says, yes, at this point, I'm allotted a thin sliver of mattress. She's got two dogs. And Carolyn says, yep, that's where they are now. And a a couple of very very cool and fun comments about my Tucker as well. Marianne says, in my next life, I want to come back as your dog. She is such a princess. Oh, yeah, she is the boss for sure. Libby wants to know, is she sticking her tongue out at you? Yeah, her tongue protrudes just a little bit more than it used to. I think it's from 14 years of non-stop licking. I think it has elongated her tongue. She's always sticking out her tongue just a little bit now. Oftentimes, you'll see older dogs with their tongue sticking out because they've lost teeth. She hasn't lost any teeth yet, knock on wood. They're not in the best of shape, I got to tell you. And her breath, whoo, good thing she's cute. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, her tongue is sticking out a little bit more than it used to. On to today's blog post, we're going to talk about keeping the faith. We've been talking about assessing our life this week. What is working and what isn't? Are you doing things that are bringing you closer to your dream? Or are you just wasting time being comfortable on the couch? Goes back to the quote of the day. Once you figure out what is and what isn't working, And you come up with a plan to move in the right direction because, yes, you do need a plan. Have faith that it will work out. Not necessarily in the way that you plan, but if you keep pushing toward your goals and keep working to make your dreams come true and never, ever give up, it will happen. In my workshop yesterday, Tony Robbins told us a story about a man who was looking for a sunken ship that had reportedly tons of treasure on it. The man spent 16 years looking for this ship. You know what happened after 16 years? He found it. He found the ship. 
It took them 16 years. And what was on board? That's right, $500 million worth of treasure. Now, Tony told us this story because he said, how many people do you know that would have kept going after one year? How many people do you know that would have kept going after five years? How many people would have kept going after 10 years? But this man operated on three theories. One was he believed it was out there. Number two was he believed that he could get to it. And number three was that he believed that it would be worth it. And he was right on all accounts. Just keep going. When coming up with your plan, though, it has to feel right. Yesterday, I talked about how once you are heading in the right direction on a chosen path, you will know it in your heart and your gut. You will know this is what you are meant for. And that is when you need persistence the most. Keep working at it. Keep planning. Keep taking those steps and keep the faith. What is it you're searching for? What type of life are you looking to live? How different does it look from the life you're living now? What are the steps you need to take to get to the vision of your dream life? Just start doing. Honestly, just start doing. Even if you aren't sure what comes next, the action of, uh, the action of doing will unveil all sorts of options as you go along. There are times... I feel like I've gone about my business completely wrong. Sometimes I'll take a course or listen to a podcast and think, that's not what I've been doing at all. And I still get the inkling just to throw in the towel every once in a while. But you know what? That would be so silly. Because no matter what missteps I have taken or not doing all the things that I should have been, I'm still further along than I was a year ago. I am making progress every day single day. And hopefully I'm helping people every single day. You want to go for the impact that you have on the people, not for the amount of people. Now, don't get me wrong. I want more and more people to discover the hopefulness, but it's about the impact that I have on the people that listen, that read my posts whatever it is that I'm doing. So please keep sending those notes telling me that I'm helping, that I'm making a difference, that you really appreciate what I'm doing because those are what are keeping me going right now. You know, I can always switch up, go in another direction, figure out my own way to go about it, but giving up is never an option. Have you ever started a project and then you give up once it gets difficult or you lose interest? Yeah, me too. It's happened a lot. But this is different for me. This is what I'm meant to do. And when you figure that out for yourself, if you haven't already, you will know it deep down inside and be willing to do whatever it takes to keep going. Give it up to the universe and believe it will happen. I'm not saying you don't have to do the work. You absolutely do. You are the only one who will work hard enough to make your dream come true. So keep at it and shift when necessary. We often get discouraged because things take longer than we would like. If you have ever read The Alchemist, you may remember a conversation the shepherd boy was having with The Alchemist. He asked, what happens if I die before I find my purpose? The response was, at least you were striving toward your purpose, and that is much better than those who don't even try. Do you agree? As I have come along in my own personal development journey, I have so much more confidence. I used to be a chronic advice seeker. I was always asking everyone, what what should I do? What should I do? 
I just read a quote about advice recently that really resonated with me. When you're asking for someone's advice, it's because you already know the answer, but you don't like it. Isn't that the truth? Don't you keep asking people what you should do until you find that one person that finally tells you what you want to hear? When you find your path, keep going. You know it's the right path for you. And even if it takes five years, it's better to be seeking your path and working for those five years than being in the same unhappy spot five years later. Things always take longer than we anticipate. It's okay. Life is a journey, and it really is the pursuit of goals that bring us the most happiness. This is why you have to love the process. This is why I do a podcast and blog every day because I enjoy it. And it's the best way I know to get my message out to as many people as possible. Find a process you love or you won't stick with it. When it comes to having faith, you have to believe you can do it as well. That's what I'm talking about. 16 years to find that treasure. This is an area a lot of people get stuck on. You can learn how to do anything. It won't always be easy. And some of it may totally suck. But if it will get you to where you want to go, it will be worth it. I'm telling myself this right now. Having technical issues. I'm not even having technical issues. I won't even attempt to start it because I'm afraid I'm going to have technical issues. So I just keep pushing things off. So much I don't know. But I need to learn it. I can look things up on YouTube. I can ask people to help. I have actually driven a lot of customer service reps crazy. And I'm going to keep doing that. I try to get through for the time be for the time being by just telling myself that once I get to a f- certain financial goal, that is the first thing I'm hiring out. Oh, yes. Once I have the money, getting myself a little virtual assistant or somebody who can handle my tech. But for now, I have to figure it out. And I am enough to get by. It doesn't have to be perfect, which is hard for me, but it does need to get done. You can do anything you set your mind to. Seriously, you can figure out anything. It may just take a little work to get there. Keep at it, and you will succeed. Hopefully, you have come up with a solid plan for taking you toward the life of your dreams. Be confident in that plan. Do the work and have faith that the universe is working to make it happen for you. Because it is. You can have anything you want as long as you are, one, bold enough to ask for it, and to be willing to work for it. Do you have your plan? Is it working? Do you need to make adjustments? Oh, go get to it. Wow, somebody had diarrhea in the mouth today. Oh, my goodness, I have just gone on and on and on. Sorry, a little extra Wendy for you on this cocktail Friday. But we made it to the weekend, baby. Go out there and be a badass. You know I'm cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. And grab a cocktail.